Hi everyone, so I just thought I'd make a quick video to let you know what I've been up to over Christmas and New Year. Uh, so my first serious computer was a BBC Micro. Uh, the BBC Micro was designed in 1981 for the for the British Broadcasting Corporation by a Acon Computers, uh, a, ca a company that was at the time based in the UK at Cambridge. Um, so that the team that designed the BBC Micro actually went on to design the ARM CPU that's almost certainly found in, in your mobile phone or, uh, and other portable electronic devices. Um, at the time when it was released in, in 1981 or 2, it, it was very expensive, it was like £400, um, even for the base, the, you know, the most basic model. I think I paid 300 for it. I, I, uh, I bought mine in like 1986 or 1987 after they'd finished even being manufactured. Um, after I'd saved up my pennies doing a paper round. So, uh, a bit before Christmas, I think December the 1st was the 30th anniversary of the first BBC Micro uh, machines being sent out to customers back in 1981. So, in order to celebrate, I thought I'd, I'd buy this machine from, from eBay. Uh, the, the original machine that I had years ago, I, I sold to uh, pay for my upgrades. So this one I bought from eBay for £25, um, uh, I think like December 20, 23rd or something, 22nd. Um, unfortunately this one doesn't have a disk drive, uh, and it, it, even worse than that, it doesn't even have a disk controller, so I can't, um, I can't just buy a disk drive and plug it in. I would have to actually buy the disk controller chip and, and plug that into the motherboard and so on. Uh, and it would all end up to be actually quite expensive. Uh, and the result would be quite clunky by modern standards. I mean the the, the the BBC used floppy, you know, five and a quarter inch floppy disk discs like this, um, which are getting increasingly difficult to get hold of and they're slow and unreliable, etc etc. So as a solution to that I thought, well, why not marry the old technology of the BBC Micro with the new technology that we have available today? Um, and the result was this, which I made. It's a it's a minimus um, Oops, a minimus uh, USB uh, development kit, um, which I paid five pounds for, um, connected to a ribbon cable uh, and plugged into the bottom of the BBC Micro, the user port. Um, so the great thing about these uh, these little microcontrollers is that they are very cheap, five pounds, uh, the price of a pint of beer. Um, they have native USB connectivity, so you know you don't have have to have any extra uh, chips like the uh, like, like the Arduino does, which uses the same sort of uh, controller. Um, and also, there's open source uh, software, open source toolchain for it. Um, and also, there's an open source library called Lufa, um, written by an Australian guy called Dean Camera. Um, and also on on the host side, uh, there's a library called LibUSB, which um, will um, handle the host side communications um, uh, on Linux, Windows, and Mac OS. So the idea uh, was to plug this thing into a into a PC and write a filing system ROM on the BBC Micro, which would rather than um, sending the data to a physical disk drive, it would send it over USB. Uh, to to the PC. Um, so here is uh, the machine being being turned on. The old beep beep, um, and you'll see that even when it's turned on, it has this uh, this this filing system. So uh, on on an on a an, uh, a traditional BBC Micro with a disk drive, um, rather than make stuff UDFS, it would say Acorn DFS or similar. Um, so on this machine, the DFS calls have all been rerouted. So rather than writing to a physical disk, um, they just send the, the data down a, a very simple SCSI-like network protocol to, to this um, to this microcontroller. Um, so let's give it a go. I'll, pl I'll plug it into my PC, and hopefully I can show you how it, how it works. So I plug it in, and the PC does the beep to show that it's accepted it um, and on the PC I have this little program here which I've written um, this is Windows but I have um, uh, I have this code built on Linux and, and Mac OS also um, so it's a little program that is basically it's basically like a file server it, it will just sit there waiting for um, disk requests to come in from the BBC 
and when they do then it will serve them serve them up from its local disk image that I've supplied on the command line. So right now um, it's behaving as if there was uh, a floppy disk with Exile, um, a game from the late 80s uh, present. So if I just press shift break it will load the game and you'll see whenever the the disk drive is, is accessed um, some of these uh, re-block log lines will appear on the screen. Uh, so it starts the game. It's it's very much faster than a ri an original disk drive as well, uh, and very much quieter. So there's the game. Um, you can uh, I can't remember what the keys are. Um, uh, so you play that for a while, and when you get when you get bored of that, uh, you can just switch to a different game. Uh, so Control C and I select a different game. This time I'm going to select Elite. Uh, this, um, this Elite is actually a, a hacked version of Elite written by a guy called Angus Duggan. Uh, so it's not the original um, unmodified version of Elite. Uh, but for the purposes of this demo it's, uh, it's the same. Okay, so again shift break and it will just boot into the, into the game. And one of the interesting things about Elite is that it, it uses a um, uh, it uses an overlay system. So rather than loading all of the, all of the code into memory at the same time, it will uh, load extra bits of code when when you move from one part of the game to the other. Um, specifically, when you go from being in a docked state at the st a space station to uh, leaving the, the space station and flying away, um, it will load some extra data from the disk. And you can see that appearing here when I launch uh, into orbit. So that's it. Um, endless fun. Get, get a few disk images from the internet. Uh, dust off your old BBC Micro from the attic. And rather than having to wait for 20 minutes while you, you load your games off uh, off uh, audio cassette or, or rather than having to mess about with your physical disk drive you can just connect your uh, your computers together with this very cheap um, it could, maybe it costs about five or six pounds to make to make it in, in total um, little interface board and there you have it uh, you can play all your old old games and waste time thanks for listening bye bye